Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to Bones Collector. Today, Laura and I just finished playing Keep the Heroes Out, a dungeon defense game by Lewis Brew. And he must be self-publishing, so it's Brew Games. And I just want to talk a little bit about the publishing of the game, and then we'll get into the game itself. I'll tell you a little bit more detail about how to play this game, or what I think about it anyway. But yeah, uh, it's got a nice box with it, which is very cool, and it comes with a, an insert that holds everything in place. I mean, this is just the base game, and you can buy some add-on stuff for it. Some extra monsters, I think Cthulhu and, and a, a unicorn, and then there's the battle... The Battle Bosses expansion yeah, and a Revenge expansion. Battle Bosses, Revenge, and you get one extra tile, I think, dungeon tile. And, and Revenge lets you play as the heroes. Yeah. So there's other stuff you can buy for this game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you get these uh, chunky wooden, all these chunky wooden monsters and everything. The tiles, uh, the dungeon tiles are gorgeous and uh, their linen finish on them. They're thick. Uh, they're kind of large, I guess. I like that. It's not little tiny tiles. This is pretty nice. And the uh, token is great. All the cardstock is linen, so that's very cool. But a very nice publishing job to go with this game. And, uh, hey, uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, the rule books. You get two books with it. There's a rule book, Keep the Heroes Out, and then your dungeon book. And there's 20 scenarios in this book, and they go from uh, easy to horrible. So, yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine what it's going to be like, this new beginning. Like, oh, I don't even think about I know. it. Yeah, because it took us three tries to beat the first scenario, the easy on family. And you can escalate mm -hmm. uh, the difficulty level in this game, which I don't think I would ever... I would play this thing on family all the way through. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll get into it a little bit. But uh, the nice thing about on the back of these books, uh, the back of the rule book is the player's turn. It tells you what to do and how to take your turn. And then on the back of the dungeon book, it goes through the hero's invasion. That is so nice because... <sighs> You have to understand how this hero invasion flows. The heroes do a lot. They have a snowball effect when they uh, activate and are spawned in the dungeon. So that's pretty cool. And we'll get to uh, that. That's all I want to tell you about the publishing. And now we'll tell you a little bit more about the game. Hey everybody, so this is Keep the Heroes Out. This is what uh, the first scenario looks like when you set up the dungeon. And there are 20 scenarios in this book. And it, each one harder than the last. <laughs> yeah, it took us three tries to beat this first scenario, and this game has got a great cute factor about it, but it isn't cute when you go to play it. Let me tell you, it's pretty tough. And uh, it's like that Galaxy Quest movie when the little baby creatures are on the, the desert planet, and they look so cute, and everybody says, oh, look how cute they are, and then they grow fangs and tear each other's throat out. It's like that. This looks cute, but it'll tear your throat out. Each player is going to be playing a... Uh, certain set of monsters and some of your monsters it depends on the the faction that you're going to be is how many monsters you're going to have in your control i was the ratkins and i had nine of these little gray ratkins that i was going to be able to spawn on the board Lori played the imps and she only had four avatars that she was using on the board so that changes the game quite a bit but it depends on what your faction is and each faction has a special power and you'll get a card with them like for my ratkins it tells me at the beginning of the game i can spawn four of them in any way i want to do it on the, the magic hat i call it the magic hat icon dungeon tiles which is is this one here and the one up here in this corner and i could spawn at the beginning of the game four of my guys on those tiles to start the game and then my special uh, benefit that I, whenever I take an action, I could spawn another one. I have a lot of guys, so it gave my, one of my special benefits was to spawn them. And it tells me I've got nine guys, and it takes one hit point to kill them, and I have ten cards in my deck. And this is what my deck of cards would look like. And all of my cards have a picture of the Ratkin in the upper right-hand corner. So you can see that that's my deck. And it, they have all these cute little pictures on them and cute little icons. And you think, oh, this game's going to be so breezy and nice, but it is exactly the opposite, man. The first time we played it and got, we got torched. Oh, we, we lost it in 10 minutes the first time because we didn't know what we were doing. We got torched, man. And the second time we almost won, we, had, we were within one card. And I'll tell you how that works. Yeah. So in the game, you have a, a couple of tiles over here called the guild tiles. And it tells you, you have to go through this guild deck twice 
During the first round, you have to play one monster card each time. Second round, you play two monster cards each time. So it gets harder in the second round, and you got to go through this deck twice. And that's called the guild deck. And it has things in here that's going to spawn these different characters on the board and, and do some damage to you. And you're constantly putting out fires in this game. It attacks you pretty healthily. You're really going to be on your heels most of the time. You have to keep this dungeon clear of heroes. You, you know, we're the monsters and the heroes are trying to get in here and take the treasure. And you have to keep those heroes off this board and as clean as you possibly can because the way they move and the way they work, uh, the hero's invasion is exactly that. It's an invasion and it diagrams their turn on this back of this, uh, this is the dungeon book. So it's on the back of the dungeon book. It shows you exactly and tells you how the heroes work. It's like a snowball effect. Once they get on the board, they uh, move according to what they accomplish. If there's nothing to do on the tile where they spawn, they're going to move on to another tile. And if there's some of these exhausted heroes on that, when they move on to that tile, they're going to wake all those guys up. And if there's nothing to do there, they're all three going to move to the next tile. And you see how that's working like a snowball effect. And once they get to this vault, this is the vault tile, and it's going to have a number four treasure on it. And when they get there and can open up that treasure, we lose the game. And it's got the picture of the skull and the crossbones on there because you suck and you lost when that happens. And it's pretty, pretty demeaning. I mean, tell you. It's like beaten up by a kid's game. Yeah. You feel like when you see this game that it's for children, and it, and it has ages 14 and up on the box. Because the first thing I said was, this isn't a family game, because it says in the book uh, you can play it on the family level to start out. Well, that's when we started out. I told Lori before we, you know, I want to learn the game, so let's start out on the family level. Well, beat the heck out of us on the family level. And I said, I don't know what family they were talking about. But, <laughs> and I would never play this game more than two, because here's the thing. This game is so tightly designed, you have to be super efficient. And all these icons you see on the bottom of these cards, these are your my faction cards for the Ratkins. You cannot waste any of this stuff. In other words, if you choose, and this is, when they, you see that slash, that's or. So you can do a melee attack or do a swarm move, which is what a lot of my cards were. Because I have so many guys, if they're on the same tile, I can move them all one space. You know, they can all go together to the next tile or they can you can move one one way and two another way or however, however you want to mix that up. But any guys that are on that one tile, you can move all of them one dungeon tile and you cannot, cannot waste those things. And then this one here is I can spawn two guys on a magic hat tile or I can move one guy one space. This is the icon for actions. So I can take two actions or do a melee. If you're going to take two actions, you you want to be able to take two actions. If you can only take one and you're going to waste an action, I'm telling you what, that's going to cost you in the game. You have to be efficient and plan very careful on how you're move, you're using this stuff. And then you can acquire cards from this market up here, what they call loot cards. You can acquire loot cards that are better. So this is a deck building game. It's a dungeon crawler deck builder, and it's important to get these better cards because they do better things. And because of the way the hero invasion works, the way they snowball against you, you have got to have some special cards or they'll just they'll overwhelm you and kill you in that second round when they're when you have to draw two monster cards after every player. So a, a one player will go and that uh, when his turn is done, he has to draw monster cards. The next player goes when his turn's done, he has to draw monster cards because that's the way this game really tries to put you under as you're doing that. But these cards here. As you can see, <laughs> my cat just shook the camera. Here I could put out a portal or put these four resources on spaces where I happen to be with one of my monsters. This is put out a portal or spawn two of my guys onto the, the two tiles that have that icon and a melee. So you can see these are a little more powerful. This one here is put out a portal or I could do three ranged attack. And I love that, but I never got to use that card. I'm so mad. We won the game though. We won the game, just barely. I mean, it was pretty close. So now I feel a little more confident about trying another scenario. But man, this game is just deceptive the way it appears to you. So you have a certain mindset about it. And when you go in and start playing it, it just, it'll obliterate you quick. 
you really have to be on your on top game, top form to, to beat this game. I can't wait to play more scenarios. I will say that now after my third play, I really, really like this game. It probably, oh, it probably would have been in my top games of 2022. I never got around to playing it. Everything about this game, and, I, and I'll talk about, and maybe I have already, but its publishing job is fantastic. Every all the token quality is great. These tiles in the dungeon are beautiful. They're they they pop off the table as you can see. They're so colorful as a, compared to something like Zombie Side or something like that where you have just grayness. And and this just is so cool, so cool looking. And again, the cartoonish nature of uh, let me show you three more of these cards real quick. The cartoony nature of these cards makes you think, oh boy, look how nice that little guy. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this game is a it's, a, it's a mongrel. It will beat you up. So once you accept that and you realize what type of game this is, uh, you're going to really work hard and, and that's fun and you'll enjoy it. But the two player count, I think it's perfect because any more than that, the downtime between players would be pretty pretty long because you're going to have five cards that you're going to draw and you want to use those to maximum efficiency. So you're going to sit and think about every one of these icons on here and how you're going to best use them. And when you've got cards like this, this is what your hand's going to look like. So I've got three of the same type of card here and you have to use one and then move on to the next one. You can't like lump them together. So you're trying to think of how you're going to best use those cards and not waste any of the icons on there, you know, and you use your movement to the uh, highest efficiency, use your melee and your ranged attack to the highest efficiency. It's very, very thinky in that way. You have to really think about it. So that if you have more than two players, you're going to have some time when you're just sitting there. I, I don't think I would ever play it with more than two players or solo. I think solo, you could get away with it. You'd have to play two factions, but it would be okay to do that, I think. And I'll probably go home and catch Lori playing this solo sometime. Yeah, I mean, it was a surprise. It was a fun game to go through. I'm glad we finally won. Uh, first time we got brutalized. The second time we played it, we got within one card of winning. And uh, Lori says, you want to try it one more time? Because <laughs> it probably took us, what, an hour and a half? I don't know. We've been playing that game most of the day. Yeah, we've been playing this most of the day. It took us, you know, like I say, three plays probably took us. I don't know. I, I got home from I was at a dentist appointment. <laughs> I got home from the dentist, I, I don't know. We've probably been playing that for four hours. We've probably been playing four hours yeah. at least, yeah. Three games. So, but everything. Hey, the card stock is linen. I love everything about this game. These little cute monsters and are, are very adorable. And all of our heroes are cardboard tokens, but you can get wooden meeples for the heroes. But I don't know if I would like that because... I think I would get them mixed up with the monsters because I've, I've seen them on YouTube and they look kind of similar to the to the monsters. So I think it would confuse me. I don't know. I would have to think about that. But these uh, cardboard tokens for the heroes and these heroes, I want to tell you, they all do different things. When this guy spawns on the board, he eats any resources. He, two, he eats two resources on the space where he spawns and I'm telling you what, like we had four books down here that we wanted to use to buy cards from the market. You get the books from one space or the you know, the resource that you need. Then you got to move to another space to exchange it for a market card of a certain type. And we had four books down here. And lo and behold, the very next monster card that came out, this guy got on there and ate two of those books. And that will irritate you to no end. And uh, this person eats the traps. The rogue eats the traps, and that's a pain in the butt because you set traps, cardboard traps that look like this in the dungeon. And when one of these other three spawn in that area, it it zaps them off the board or defeats them immediately. But this person eats the trap, and that will irritate you. And then this archer, when when they spawn, uses ranged attack and will, will kill people on... on uh, adjacent tiles. So, okay. So yeah, this one thing that I forgot to tell you about is this, uh, guild deck over here. One during your turn at any time during your turn, you can draw one card off of there and whatever is on that card, like you see, this one is the rogue. You don't have to follow any of this action stuff down here, but that rogue, you have to take one of those rogue tokens and put that in the cells down here. But if you have some of these in the cells already, which you don't want to do. 
You know, some of these guys are turned over in the cell on the cell part of the dungeon. But uh, when this guy spawns in here, all three of these would turn over and they activate. That's horrible. So you have to keep this cell tile completely cleared also. And it's just, uh, it's hard to do. I mean, it's difficult to juggle that kind of thing. I always kept a guy in here so that I could do a melee attack and kill whoever was in there so that we could keep pressing our luck. But you have to do things like that to beat this game. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, that's about it. That's all I wanted to say about it. I think, again, if you go in with the right mindset, you'll love this game. And, and <laughs> I, I, didn't go in, I didn't go in with the right mindset. I didn't know if I was going to like it. After I played it the first time, I was like, wow, that was completely different than I thought it was going to be. And when you get thrown for a loop like that, it's difficult to say, well, I like that. But uh, after we played it the second time and we almost won, I said, ah, let's play it again. And, uh, and I ended up liking it on the third play, of course, more than the first two by far. And I can't wait to try some of the other scenarios because they're very interesting. And what they do is in this guild deck, we had a couple of cards that were added in here because of our scenario that we were playing, the first scenario. And it was these two, these two cards. And you can see you got a number one on there. Now, the next scenario, I think, has four of these cards. There, it's not these, these cards uh, specifically. It's for a, a four of a different card uh, that's going to be put in this guild deck. And as the scenarios go forward, uh, they do more powerful and more damaging effects. And sometimes there's more and more of them. So uh, that gets uh, changed also as the scenarios progress forward. But wow, what a surprise. It caught me off guard. I did not expect that. I thought it was going to be a fun, loving little dungeon crawler. <laughs> it was fun, but it wasn't very loving. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. I just wanted to show you a brief little overview and uh, give you some thoughts on what I, I thought of. Keep the heroes out. Uh, I love it. Okay, so that was a little bit of an overview on how I felt about Keep the Heroes Out. I loved it, and I hope you get a chance to play it. I hope you love it. It's uh, Again, it would have been in my top of games of 2022 had I played it then. I just never got around to it. Uh, there's so many games that come out now. Uh, I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to play this game, and I'm so happy I had the opportunity to tell you about it in the video. So please give us a like, a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe, please. And we love every one of you. Keep on board gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. And we'll see you the next time on The Bones Collector. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector. And today on Bones Collector, we just finished playing a game called Sanctum. It came out in 2019 by Czech Games Edition. And the designer is Philip Nedek. Let's first talk about the component quality and the publishing job on this game. It's Czech Games, so the box is thin. You see how that box comes away from the sides? They have, even in Lost Ruins of Arnak, their boxes just are not very strong. They're easy to split and break. I wish they would step up their game on, on the box quality. It's not a very nice box. The other things in the game are fine. The token quality, the dice are wood. Uh, I, I would like to have seen some better dice. I don't know. And the card quality is just regular card stock. That would have been nice if they were uh, thick linen cards. The board itself, I don't think uh, it's, I, I don't, the art on it I just think is weak. I, you know, I'm going to be critical of the publishing. Yeah. The card art is very nice and the character art on your player board is very nice. So I, I like that, but the art on the boards itself I thought was weak. Um, the, the board thickness is fine, the character sheets are fine, they're thick cardboard. You get this nifty little organizer that holds things when you put the game away. This is a game tray. That's ours. This uh, is ours also from the dollar store. Uh, the rule book is pretty well written. You have a pretty good idea how to play this game when you read this rule book. And you have these player aids that is going to tell you specifically the skills that you're going to be able to acquire off your skill table. And it defines each one of those so that you know how to use them. And that's very nice. And each of them specific to each character, so each character is very different. And I really like that about the game. And then, yeah, then there was this sheet that tells you what to do on your turn. Move, fight, rest, and get a, a check for achievements. And you check for achievements after you fight or rest. And that sheet will help you immensely when you're playing this game. I wanted to talk about the figures a little bit. I don't know why. There's only four characters in the game 
you have four avatars. They are different colors, which I appreciate. But I don't know why Czech Games couldn't have offered these painted to look exactly like the characters on the character sheet. And then these gems that you use in the game, you have gems that are red, and then you have stamina tokens that are red. You have gems that are blue, and you have focus tokens that are blue. So that gets can be a little confusing because you have those two colors that are matching, but they do different things. Okay, now I've told you all that I didn't like about the publishing of this game, but I want to tell you, it's a really fun game to play. This is our third playthrough or fourth? I, I can't remember. It's third or fourth play that we've had, and we absolutely love it. It's such a fun game. It is a Euro game at its heart. It's kind of a a, a hybrid game, I guess, and which are games that I really like. It has an Ameritrashy theme. Okay, so here's the backstory in this game. It's about the, a king that was weak and foolish and the ruler of Sanctum. Though a ruler of a bountiful land, the king saw visions of even greater power, power that laid somewhere beneath the city. So he began the frenzied digging, and he tore down buildings, dug up streets in search of the hallucination he has for getting more powerful. But it proved true. The king did find power. He found it sealed underground and he broke the seal with his own hands. The jade sarcophagus has been opened. Who will come to the aid of Sanctum? And you're playing heroes trying to fight your way through hordes of demons so that you can get to the final big boss, the demon lord, and fight him and become the most powerful. And that's kind of an Ameritrashy theme and a Ameritrashy world. Plus you are rolling dice to resolve many things uh, when you're fighting. So that's kind of an Ameritrashy uh, mechanic. But the other mechanics are very Euro and I think that's why I like this game so much. It's just a lot of fun. So let me tell you a little bit about how to play this game. Uh, the big focus of this game is this player sheet that each one of you, each person playing the game will have. And this is the character that's in the middle of the sheet here. And you can see these separate sections of the character. And those are the basic abilities that you're going to start the game with. There's none in there here, none here. And then you have uh, your boots or feet down here have a defense with two purple circles. That means you can use any color of tokens to place there to activate that ability. You start out with three stamina tokens, that's the red ones, and two focus tokens, that's the blue ones, and that's just for this character. I don't know if they're all alike, I, I think they're they're different. So, that, But just for this character, you start out with three and two. And then you can see these circles, you would have to use a red one there, a, a, a stamina token there, a focus token there, focus there, two stamina tokens there to activate that two defense. So you can see you start out pretty weak in this game. Now when the game begins, depending on the player count, the first player would draw one of these cards, second player gets two. These cards simply tell you you can move a gem up on your skill table. So I'm going to go to level two and move this blue gem up, a blue gem, in, in this table over here. And I'm going to go from level two, because the card said that, I'm going to move this up to here. So that puts it up, and it, you can only move one step at a time. But it opens that up right now for me. So that would open that up, and I could take a new focus token out of the supply. And now I have three focus tokens before I even start the game, and that's pretty nice. And then I'll take this tile and turn it over and show that I've already done that. Okay, my next card says... I can move a level three green token up one space. So one of these green tokens I can take from here and move up to here. And I've, but I've still got a green token on this card, so I'll have to move that before I can activate that card. So that's what I'm going to do to start the game. So now I can discard those and get rid of them. So anyways, that's what you're trying to do in this game is work this character sheet. That is the meat of this game. And then you start out with what's called a rage token that can turn one die into anything you want. And you can use it, flip it over, and reactivate it. There's certain things you can do to reactivate that. You'll start out with two dice. You'll end up at final boss with five dice because you're going to get this third dice right here when you rest for the first time, which is one of the things you can do on your turn. And you automatically get that die. 
and then you're going to get a die at this space on the second act board, and you're going to get another die on the final boss board right here. So you'll end up with five dice to do the final battle. Now, in this game, you have three decks of cards down here of demons. Level one, two, and three. Of course, level one are the weaker abilities. Level three are the better, the best abilities. And then, of course, something in the middle in level two there. Now, on your turn to start the game, you're simply going to take your avatar and put it on, this, on a space right here. You have to go to the first available space. And that's where you'll put him. And then when, when you move to that space, that's a move action. So on your, care, on your sheet, your player aid, you know, for the, for the game, it tells you move. You're going to advance, which is moving. Then you're going to reveal demons, take demons, and then check the treasure chest. So the first thing you do is advance, which is placing your character. Then you're going to reveal demons. Now, revealing demons means I'm going to look at this space... And right here it says five pairs of those demons. And each demon, it depends on what icons those are, is what demons you're going to reveal and place onto the board. And that's five pairs because you have two icons. So that means this level one deck, I'm going to take five pairs of this level one deck and put them on the board right here. And then my character sheet says after I reveal them, then I take demons. So I'm going to take one pair of those and I'm going to place them here on my player board. So let's say I did that. I'm going to place five pairs of these. And I'm just I'm trying to do this one hand. So, oops, I don't want to turn them over. So five pairs of demons. There's one, two, three, four, and five. So now I've got five pairs of demon cards on this board right here. Now, as part of what I'm doing, I'm going, you know, I moved, then I revealed the demons. Now I've got to take a pair of these demons. And what do I want to do? What pair do I want to take? Well, the first thing you're going to think about is what you want to do over here. So right now, I want to decide what would I rather do. Activate this poison blade? You know, that would take two red demon cards. Now I could do that by taking these two cards and defeating these demons. That means I can move two red gems. So I would be able to move these up to here and then take this card and I could activate it and that would be a new ability for me. It lets me make one sixes or sixes ones. So even though we're rolling a lot of dice in this game, there is a ton of dice mitigation. Even on your character sheet, even at the beginning of the game, plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So you're going to be mitigating a lot of dice effects uh, throughout the game. And that's that's really nice. So you, you don't get totally trashed by having a bad roll. So you have ways to mitigate that. And that's really nice. And you're going to start out on your sheet with 10 health. And you get no more for the rest of the game. I mean, when you, when you lose health, you just lost it for the whole game. And that's why you have to be very efficient about how you do this. So I'm going to, let's say I want to choose these two cards Okay, so now I have these demon battles, these demons up here on my board. Now my next turn, do I want to battle those and try and defeat them right now? Or do I want to move and get more demons up here to battle? But when you have four of them up here, of course, you're going to have more dice to put on them. And you're going to have to mitigate the attack or damage they're going to do to you. And each dot on the bottom of these cards tells you how many damage they're going to do you, to you, which in this case is only one per card on these level one demons. But moving these gems is paramount. So, you know, you have to decide, <laughs> do you feel lucky? In order to take more demons on your next turn, you're going to have to move. And the faster you move up this path, the faster you're going to get to that big boss battle. And in a two-player game, you only have two acts. These are called act boards. You only have two act boards. So you, once you're to the end of that path, you're going to go up and fight that final boss. And that battle is ridiculously difficult. I'm going to tell you right now. So being efficient in the first part of this game during Act 1 and Act 2 is paramount 
in doing well or surviving the boss battle. We've played it three times. It's my third time playing it, and I did not survive. I ended up with no health. I was on my the last demon card, and I left this board set up so I could show it to you. But I was on the last demon card, and I couldn't defeat it, and I ended up losing. And if you don't have any health left, you just lost. But the player with the most health, the people that do survive, the player with the most health is going to win the game. Now, at the end, once you've done all this, you've activated as many abilities as you can possibly activate. And some of these cards, when they activate, will come over here. So if I, if I complete this card, I'm going to take it off my board, and I'm going to look here, and it turn it over, and it has this icon, this diamond-shaped icon. That's going to go on my player mat right here. And it gives me a potion bag, and that's a place for an extra potion. You only have four potion spaces, this is going to give me a fifth because when you play a potion before your turn, you're going to move any focus and stamina tokens from your character back up into the supply and you can reuse them again. So that's very important. And then there's some of these other cards like this one here. Outnumbered, before you roll, activate your rage if you do not have enough dice to kill all your foes. So you can reactivate your rage uh, in a different way than the normal way. And that's pretty nice too. And it has an icon, uh, this picture on the back. And this picture is what you want to match up over here on this board, which is boom, 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 boom. Again, these things are pretty light. I, I have a trouble. Oh, it's right there it is. So you can see this picture right there on the board. Right there. And I'm going to put this card right there. And then that's active for the rest of the game. So that's what you're trying to do. I have these two red demons. Once I defeat them, you know, I have to put a six on here to defeat that guy. And I have to put a one on here to defeat that guy. So I do that. And then these cards become available to me. And to flip them over and you put them over into this part of your board, your player mat. And those are upgrades to your basic abilities. And you can see in this place, it's a tunic or, or armor and knight's armor. And you have to put a red gem on that to activate it. Yeah, it's an upgrade to the armor. Now, in my basic armor, I have two defense by for playing two stamina tokens. This one gives me three defense. You can see three shields in that little circle. And I have to play two stamina tokens on that to get those three defense. So it's upgrades to your basic abilities that you're looking for. And all of these demon cards have items on the back of them that are upgrades. And as you get uh, demon cards from the more powerful decks, they really like, the, here's a level three demon. Once I defeat that guy, and you don't know what's on the other side, you can't cheat and look. But you turn it over, and this is a set of boots called Shadow Striders, and it takes three green gems to activate it, but wow, for one stamina token, you get three defense, and for a blue focus token, you can turn any die to a two. So you're, you, if you acquired this, you would put it on your player mat right there. You'd have to put three gems on it. You'd have to have them in your supply from here, and that's what you're trying to do in this game is make as much happen as possible. Get as many upgrades on your character guy here before the end of the act board so that when you do the boss battle you are as powerful as you can possibly be because it's difficult to run this gauntlet and i hope you can see um this is a player sheet this is Lori's player sheet she won the game she ended up with four health and i died but she ended up with fourth health four health after she ran this gauntlet and what happens is once you get to this this big boss act board you turn over some of these cards i mean these demon cards so you have this demon deck and once you both get on that board you'll turn a couple of these up and you have no choice you have to resolve these so you'll turn two of them up and it has crazy stuff on it that's going to hurt you you have to do this corrupt a non-weapon ability space or lose one health off your health track over here almost always you will choose to lose the health because if you deactivate any of these spaces on your ability, on your character, that's something you 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 built that up and you don't want to lose it. But most of the time I chose, at least, and I lost the game. <laughs> but most of the time you chose it too, didn't you? To lose the health rather than corrupt an ability space. And, and then this one here says, 
lose one stamina or one focus, which would, would be these things, which you need those to activate your ability spaces. So it's tough decisions, but you have to face two of those right away. And then you deal out the gauntlet and you're going to put demon cards, five of them, on your player mat right here. And then these are fury cards that are turned face down. And there's four of those. So what happens in this final gauntlet, you're going to battle every one of these cards. And you don't get to rest. When you rest during the game, you're going to remove all these focus and stamina tokens and put them back into the supply. Now, again, you once you use these in the final battle, they're just stuck there unless you use a magic potion. There is no rest action to remove all of these back into your focus and stamina supply. So you your hands are tied. You are going to battle this gauntlet without any rest. You can use these blessing tokens. These are things that you got off the achievement board. So you have to defeat this first. You roll your five dice. You try to, if you did not roll anything, you need that card, you're hurting already. Because to mitigate and make that those dies on this card right here, you need a one and a six. If you did not roll a one and a six with a five dice, then you're going to have to use your abilities down here to make that happen. Plus two or minus one or whatever you have on your cards. As you can see here uh, that Lori had, to, yeah, there's a plus or minus three, a minus one. So you have to use those in order to defeat that card because if you don't, you take damage from this card and anything to the right. And you have to mitigate that damage on this board also. Oh, man, I'm telling you. So let's say you've defeated that. Then you're going to move to this Fury card. You have to turn over this Fury card. And it has two dice on it. You have to have two twos. But regardless, you have to have you have to resolve that effect. So that effect says re-roll all twos if you have any. So it takes twos. You see how this is working? You have to have twos to resolve this card. But if you have twos that you rolled, you have to roll them, and you can't roll twos. If you roll twos, you got to keep rolling. Yeah, if you, you roll twos, twos, yeah, so you're screwed. <laughs> so you have to use again more dice manipulation off of your character sheet or your rage token to make the dice you need to satisfy that card. Then you can move to this card. And you're only rolling five dice, so there's no way you can do all three of these cards. So you, because you only have, you had six dice, so didn't you? Yes. You, okay, well, Lord, because I your had, character? I had that one that I could roll, and if I mit if I mitigated it yeah. I could use it. Okay. If I didn't then I couldn't. And I had to roll it before the battle. So because of her character she could possibly do three cards. Uh, my character I only had five dice and there's no way I could complete uh, a, a six three characters on this gauntlet. But she could possibly do that. But once you complete this card then you have to go here and turn over this fury card and resolve it. And it says we roll all fours if you have any. And it takes two fours. So, oh man, you had some bad cards. So then you'd move to here. And let's say she couldn't resolve that. Then you have to take all the damage off this card, which is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage if you cannot resolve that card. And you can see how this is working. It beats on you very hard. Um, I got to the last space before I died. Lori was able to run the gauntlet and win the game with four health still on her board. Now, if I had finished that last card of mine, I had two health left on my board. I was all the way down to two, but and she would have still won the game because she had four. But man, uh, it's really, really a fun game. And that's a little bit about how you play Sanctum. I hope that helped give you an idea how to play this game. But one other thing I wanted to tell you is when you get to that final boss hack, you not only turn over these two demon cards, but then you're going to turn over three more, right? Yeah, two and each then three. Each player takes a turn on the gauntlet. Yeah. Then you turn over two. Yeah, turn and over each two. Each player takes another turn on the gauntlet. Then and you turn, turn over, over one. one. So you're going to have and to. That's it. Five of these you'll have to resolve while you're doing battle in the final battle, plus the gauntlet that you're running on your board. It is rough. We had a great time playing this game. I, Lori's won it every time. I have not won this game. It's. Um, but I'm, I like it. <laughs> it's fun. I can't wait to play it again. <laughs> but that's Sanctum. And I hope you got something out of that video. I like this game a lot. And 
yeah, I mean, it's a fun time. I saw this game when it came out in 2019, and I didn't know if I would like it, and I just got around to really looking into it, for whatever reason. And I like it a lot. It's going to stay in our library. I mean, wow, I don't know. I don't know if this wouldn't be in my top 100 of all time, because it's fun, folks. I play games to have a good time, and this game is fun. And I have fun playing it. Well, I don't like fighting games, but yeah. I'm not fighting you. I'm fighting that monster. Yeah. So I you, like that. You're not fighting each other in this game. You're battling the demons. It's uh, a puzzle. As you're I going up these act boards, and you're going to fight that big bad demon at the end of the game. And that's who you're fighting in this game. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. I want to tell you about this game. I love every one of you guys. That's why I like telling you about terrific games like Sanctum. And please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you the next time on The Bones Collector. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.